Fora TV. The world is thinking. This is a question that probably several of you could speak on, uh, but one of the things that I hear coming out of the energy industry is basically to the effect of, well, alternatives are great, but there's no way you can scale them up rapidly enough in order to really meet the energy demands of our society. And I mean, is, what's, how true is that? Is there some kind of, uh, how do we get from where we are coal and oil based into something that really is sustainable and, and healthier. I'm, I'm happy to do give, a, a bit Give it a that. shot. Okay. Um, so let me just put a couple of the numbers for that in, in context just to kind of figure out what we're talking about. The executive order that the governor signed on Earth Day 2005 that I'd referred to called for California in the short term to try to catch up to the Kyoto Protocol, which the U.S. abandoned. And it basically says that California, it's too late to hit it for 2010, but by 2020, we'll have gotten to where we were supposed to be in 2010, so we'll sort of catch up a decade late. And then in the long term, we'll do the ecologically correct thing to do. That is to reduce our emissions by 80%. And that's more or less the ecological target. 100% would be great, but let's not quibble over the last 20% as yet, since we have no idea how to get there in some political sense. That path of saying we, we need to sort of stop the upward trajectory of emissions and start bringing it downwards, and in the long term, in four and a half decades, to bring it down by 80% or more. And I think once you get to about 70 or so, the, you're going to find the last bit we, we, we do just because it's just ugly and dirty. We're, we're going to want to clean it up. So that tells you that we need a massive amount of green, of clean power in the system. And anyone, this will be a little bit unfair, but basically anyone who learned electrical engineering, learned power analysis, learned energy analysis before about 1999, which is almost everyone doing anything, thinks that renewables are cute bit players on the side. Right now, we get four-tenths of a percent of our electricity in the United States from wind. We get less than one-tenth of a percent from solar. And so if you take this perspective that these are tiny bit players, and again, everyone who essentially went to school, you know, except for Audrey here, um, it was really steeped in not only do we not have enough of these alternatives out there, but that the grid will do all kinds of nasty communist things if you try to change that. In fact, I was taught at a pretty good engineering department um, that if you get more than a few percent renewables on the grid, and renewable didn't mean some wonderful clean technology, it meant things that go on and off, solar that goes on and off, wind that goes on and off, the grid will blow up and it will have shortages and you'll see sparks flying out of towers and it will look like, you know, just some, some, some horrible nightmare of electrical engineering disaster like the Northeast blackout. Well, in fact, northern Germany installed wind power and they installed it and they discovered this is pretty easy. And northern Germany, over the course of six or eight years, went from no wind power to 25% of their energy from wind alone on, the, on a reasonable month and 50% on the good months. And Germany then said, well, this wasn't so bad. We're going to have a 10% target for wind power. We're going to have a similar target for solar. We have seen the stories of energy efficiency, Audrey said, which makes all your investments easier. We have seen places that are now aggressively going after biofuels and ethanol and a variety of technologies and solar. And all of the thinking of the engineers that you're talking about at the utilities is all based on an idea that these technologies, these renewables, are at best bit players, whereas the few places on Earth that have actually tried to expand the renewable sector in a dramatic way, not to have it grow a little bit less than the, than the growth rate in demand so it kind of decreases in its percentage share even if it, as it ramps up, the places that have really tried have actually discovered that it was actually very easy and frequently hugely cost effective to invest in these so-called more expensive renewable technologies. And so 
I think that the lesson is we haven't tried. We don't know how hard or easier it is to be. But every place that's tried has discovered that it's actually relatively easy to do it. So our assessment in our, in our lab is that it would not be a huge challenge to think about reversing the world's mix over the next 30 or 40 or 50 years to going from largely fossil fuel based to fossil fuels being in the minority over the timetable that we think we need for global warming. And there's lots of examples of places where this has happened. But that is not the mantra that you'll hear when you go, not just to coal companies or oil companies, but to really anyone who thinks about the grid in the, in the sort of big power plants, big transmission lines, as opposed to the grid should be the eBay where we buy and sell power. And if we penalize power for being dirty, which is what we don't want, the clean technologies are likely to do better. And yet right now, almost every incentive we have is for dirty power. The California crisis, 2001, was all about benefiting dirty power over more secure, cleaner options, and then discovering that we had a mess as a result.